This video is sponsored by Vanta. Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, and more, saving you time and money while helping you build customer trust. Learn more about Vanta in a few moments. As we yet again approach a new year, it's time to evaluate where the cybersecurity industry is at and perhaps where it's heading. In this video, as displayed on the screen here, I'll be overviewing some predictions for cybersecurity in 2025, specifically the job market opportunities, potential predictions, and just general industry trends. 2024, no doubt, was a difficult year for security professionals and prospective individuals looking to get into cybersecurity. We witnessed a lot of layoffs and a general contraction of job opportunities. Now, mostly this was reported in the tech sector, but along all industries, there was a general contraction. Many of us had to deal with uh, lots of ghost job postings, personal layoffs, or budgetary restrictions on hiring. This led to effects of being a bit demoralizing for a lot of us. Counter to what many of us see on news articles and magazines, especially this time of year, with the three and a half million job shortage by you know, X amount of years, I've anecdotally witnessed something different. Companies are willing to prioritize security up to a certain extent. Prioritizing security is ultimately very costly. And for the first time actually in six years, we've seen a hiring on or a halt on security openings and positions. How will this affect the security job market opportunities? Well, for 2025, I personally, this is not reported, but I personally predict a potential softening in the difficulties of landing a job uh, for those who are very qualified and continue to leverage the tools at their disposal. Although I do foresee extended challenges in a very competitive, crowded market for the most of us, and especially entry-level jobs, it's still very much so going to be a challenge. Now, from a pure data or statistical perspective, industry research has shown that there's still going to be this 3.5 million job shortage opening of security positions by 2025, with an expected median salary of $112,000 based off the U.S. Bureau of Labor of Statistics. And, you know, we've seen numbers like these reported year after year for several years now. And it's good to see that we've continued to see an increase in these uh, openings in median salary, but this is a lot of it. It's just had to do on paper. Um, you know what the industry is actually like versus what it's being reported on paper may be different. And depending on who you ask, I still think that cybersecurity in 2025 is going to be difficult, but perhaps a little less difficult than 2024. 2023 and 2024 were years of the endless promises, rallies, and hype of. AI. AI is going to do everything. And AI insecurity was no doubt, especially at the forefront of many security leaders these past couple of years. AI is still very much so predicted to serve as a foundational technology to better bolster security. Even before, you know, 2023, AI has been in the security marketplace for a while. And, you know, although we've seen these grand promises by startups and every company reporting with AI this, um, I think that there's going to be some contraction, uh, especially for overpromised uh, outcomes in 2025. AI is predicted to help, but it's, it's predicted to help in a very narrow, nuanced, niche way. And this is kind of known as narrow AI. Uh, select markets, tools, and technology are, are very much so truly benefiting from AI. But in many circles, the whole AI enabled, AI driven, AI tool, very much so overused and, and just inappropriately promised. I think we'll see narrow AI um, settle into the industry specifically and especially angled towards a security perspective. We're going to see AI continue to help with basic security and, and automating various workflows. For example, to help pass through massive data sets in your security operations center, maybe streamline parts of a workflow or help automate various components, or maybe just even just automate redundant tasks in security. Those are going to be very much so use cases that I will continue to see in 2025. Circling back from a career perspective, security professionals who are able to identify and leverage the various LLMs and AI tools um, at their disposal, I think are going to be continuing to have a level up and being more productive, better suitable employees, securing promotions or just even getting hired. So make sure to continue to at least browse the, the new developments in the AI industry. From an attacker perspective, we'll likely see a continuation of the 2024 pattern where AI was lowering the barrier to entry for cyber criminals or wannabe cyber criminals. For example, I see cyber criminals continuing to deploy AI to launch thousands of targeted phishing emails uh, to very small businesses, consumers simultaneously, customizing each one 
um, with various different data sets and making it look very real. And this is going to continue to maximize the effect of, you know, further increasing your initial access. And then finally, I think we'll continue to witness attacks being leveraged on the AI LLM models themselves. You know, attack techniques such as LLM jacking, uh, jailbreaking out of AI guardrails, and private data being exposed by users and employees who are uploading company data to do whatever. Yeah, I think we'll continue to see a uh, more sophistication in the tactics and techniques being used to break the actual models. And now, in October of 2025, we will witness one of the largest end of life or ELL announcements since Windows XP, which is Microsoft plans to end the security or updates in general for Windows 10, unless you pay for extended support. Now, this time is perhaps a bit different, uh, given that Windows 11 requires some arbitrary hardware requirements, specifically uh, the trusted platform module, TPM. Really, this means that millions of systems are going to lack that frequent uh, OS updates that Microsoft issues, a lot of them being bundled with security updates in October. And I think what we're going to see is uh, a lot of these devices being non-compliant, not being able to or eligible to upgrade and becoming increasingly vulnerable over time. Much of the hardware in use today will be life cycled, if not already, and refreshed with new hardware, but we'll likely see a huge surge in vulnerable devices later next year as security updates are no longer issued in addition to just general feature updates. Good news is there's actually predictions for an increase in alternative desktop environments. So, you know, think Mac OS, but also there has been a new surge in uh, desktop or Linux friendly desktop environments such as Ubuntu desktop, which is good. Speaking of Windows EOL and compliance, a quick transition into today's sponsor, Vanta. Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 2701, and more saving you time and money while helping you build customer trust. Plus, you can streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrating your security posture with customer-facing Trust Center, all powered by Vanta AI. Over 7,000 global companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. Using the link in the description below or the QR code on the screen here, you can get $1,000 off Advanta. That's $1,000 off by clicking either the link in the description below or the QR code scanned here. Ransomware will continue to pose a large threat to organizations in 2025. We continue to see this trend year after year. I think we're going to see these multi-faced double extortion techniques continue to evolve. So, you know, not only just encrypting data, but also stealing that data and perhaps even just reselling it. I think that AI is going to be bundled into augmenting or at least helping with the discovery process in some ways for various different ransomware affiliate or just general groups. Specifically for initial access, I see ransomware leveraging AI to increase the uh, overall fidelity and use of personal data in social engineering attacks which will trick victims for sure. Now, info stealers have become a very large emerging threat over the past two years. We're going to continue to see, I think, a development scale and proliferation of info stealer malware. There was actually just a big recent info stealer malware takedown. Info stealers being used to steal, of course, sensitive information, but they can also have various other things like such as extorting users out of money or their data, deploying ransomware we've seen, uh, joining large swarms of botnets. So this is just a, another evolution of malware in general, but I think that we're going to continue to see a rise in uh, the overall capabilities of info stealers. There's a lot of looming concern over supply chain security. So, you know, with the solar winds attack that happened roughly three and a half years ago, there's been this growing pressure from governments and regulatory firms to require a software bill of materials or SBOM, basically identifying what type of software is being used. What's been discovered these last couple of years is a lot of what's being used by commercial products for sale is third party or open source software libraries that are being consumed. And, and these are consumer grade products that are being sold as security solutions to various different companies. Security company Checkpoint has predicted that there will likely be a few very large scale supply chain attacks occurring this year. We'll see if that happens. There's no data backing that up. It's just literally a prediction. From a security perspective, we'll likely see security companies 
continue to grow their practices with evaluating and auditing third and fourth party vendor risk and for companies that are consuming those products to be really diligent on that. We're going to continue to see attacks in a supply chain security. It's an inherent vulnerability and something that I think that's going to continue to evolve in 2025. So these are some big industry trends I thought were relevant to present to this channel for 2025 in cybersecurity. Now, I skipped over a lot of big predictions such as quantum computing and cryptographic concerns, zero trust architecture, security vendor software, you know, agents, aka the CrowdStrike incident, regulatory changes, and much more. Um, so I will make sure to leave a few articles in the description below if you, you want to explore a little bit more about 2025 predictions in cybersecurity. I'm hoping you found this video informative and have a good close to 2024. And yep, you until until the next time, have a good day.